All right, welcome everyone to the City Council meeting for Monday, November 27th. Um, if we could have a roll call, please, ma'am, to establish quorum. Terry McClung. I am here. Mickey Schneider. Here. Bob Thomas. Here. David Mitchell. Here. Christy Kendrick. Here. We have five. All right. If we could have the stand and pledge allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Get a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. We've got additions, corrections? Yes, ma'am. Um, I would like to add a discussion of the event happening in December on Spring Street, please. Second. Okay. Anything else? If not, uh, get a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Uh, get a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Any corrections, additions? All those in favor of the minutes as submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 Yes. I don't remember who it was. Terry, who is the second? I'll second it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, commission and planning reports. We got a vacancy on the uh, planning, uh, position four. Uh, also have a vacancy on the CAPC. And got a position on the uh, HDC that's vacant. And we also have an application that's a reapplication from Steve Hollifield. Uh, who's already on the commission? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a motion that we go ahead and reapprove Steve Hollyfield. I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. All right, I think we have uh, somebody from the cemetery. Give us a little report update. Hi, I'm Susan Tharp, Chairperson of the City Cemetery Commission. Um, we've had a fun year and a little bit of a transition in the middle of it, but we've accomplished several things. Um, we are continuing to um, get our application in for our historical registry, um, National Historical Registry. Um, we received a grant um, that was actually um, needed to write the application for the grant, or for the, not for the grant, but for the application to determine our historical, um, that we are a historical cemetery and that all of our numbers are in the right spot. Um, we've continued work with our um, database information. Um, we have completed a small database now that is functional for our members to access, or not, for the commission members to access. Um, there's no access to that publicly yet. Um, the database is um, being used to cross-reference um, several old documents and things in the vault and um, we're using it to determine available spaces. Um, we're also using it um, cross-referencing and making sure that there's not any inconsistencies in paperwork and if there is we're um, correcting those. Um, we're also out in the cemetery actually physically marking now the um, unused and unoccupied areas so that it makes it more um, friendly to the public because not everybody wants to talk about that with somebody and walk through the cemetery. Um, so they can actually walk out there now and they'll find um, just red bricks in the ground where there's actually spaces available. Um, We've actually also, in amongst doing that, um, it's kind of started a study of a block by block basis. So we're taking one block at a time, cross-referencing it, um, updating our dat database with it, making sure that what it's Joe Blow is where he's supposed to be 
physically in the ground. <laughs> um, you'd be surprised there are a few of those that are not in the right spot. <coughs> um, uh, we've established several um, cremation areas now. Um, burials have changed a lot. People are, um, the demands for burials and the types of burials are changing. Um, so we've established a place for cremations now. Um, we are working on a cremain garden, um, but not, we haven't just picked out that spot yet. Um, we've installed signage um, for uh, pet waste and pet waste stations now. So lots of people walk their dogs out there so that we've got good signage up now and, and got that available for them. Um, and that was through a donation. We were really excited, to, ecstatic to get that. Um, we've used 32 yards, which is basically two large dump trucks of topsoil. Um, our groundskeeper was able to go through and fill several of the sunken graves, get things leveled up, um, clean off new graves, get grass established on new graves so we're not looking at mounds of rocks out there hardly anymore. Um, very, he's very good at staying on top of that. Um, we had um, three or four, I can't remember off the top of my head, large, huge, big pine trees that had died. Um, we've gotten those removed, um, so they're not going to fall on headstones and break them now. Um, and just basic uh, continual daily operation of groundskeeping, plot sales, um, bookkeeping and answering phone calls. Um, lots of people want to know where grandma's at. Um, our goals for next year, a um, little bit lofty. Um, one of our main goals is to uh, transfer our superintendent duties to our groundskeeper. Um, and in doing that, we're going to uh, increase the groundskeeper's hours to 40 hours a week um, with a small pay increase to compensate for the additional duties, which is basically to put him on call for 24-7 because um, you never know when the public's going to call you with a question. Um, this is a very, the superintendent duties are currently on the chairperson and when the chairperson works several full-time jobs and they call you and say, oh, by the way, we're having a burial at this time, it's kind of a big inconvenience to drop what you're doing in your businesses and have to go out there and attend a, an opening of a grave site. And so that's a consistent problem and I think that's made it very difficult for a lot of superintendents on this commission to do and live their regular life. Um, so we're looking to get that switched over to the groundskeeper, um, let him answer phone calls. He's out there already. He can go out and look at things. I mean, he's, he's on site. He's ready to go. He's there. Um, the other thing is, is this will be better enable your commission members to um, focus on tasks that are not daily operational duties to get them more looking in, looking ahead into um, getting more plot sales, determining what your expansion capabilities are in the cemetery. Um, when you have to deal with daily stuff, it kind of, you don't have time to fundraise and think of ideas. So we're trying to free up the, the commissioners to be able to do that. Um, we want to finish the historical registry process. Um, after that process is finished, um, we'll receive, um, we'll be able to apply for grants um, so that we can repair the front fence, do basic repairs, add fence, um, lots of things that they'll, they'll grant us money to kind of help us do out there, columbariums and fun stuff. Uh, yeah, that's fun. Um, <laughs> We also are wanting to produce a viability study this year um, that would show a better timeline um, so that we can better budget on what is available out there. Um, as of now, there's no way to tell, we can't say there's 550 grave sites left out there 
and we have this much money out of those sites so we can use that money to go and open up more land. We don't have any capability of that and so we want to finish this viability study um, which is lots of man hours that are volunteer hours too. So um, the groundskeeper has been excellent about helping us with that too. Um, and of course continuing the cross-reference uh, the old paperwork um, we want to expand the database we want to be able to scan in all the old deeds so all you got to do is the public can go in and click on somebody's name and it'll show the deed the plot where they're at um, if we happen to have it sometimes there's old obituaries we'll scan that in with them we want to be able to tag a photo on of the of the headstone um, and possibly do some aerial maps to where people can kind of look from the air and, and see where people are at in the in the cemetery. Um, and then, of course, just our basic. We just need to provide adequate tools, um, supplies, and equipment to maintain the grounds, and we want to keep this in a timely and a cost prohibitive manner. Um, you have to realize that the demand on the grand, groundskeeper will constantly increase. Every time you set a headstone, every time you dig a grave, every time you plant a flower or you let somebody plant something or put up a border around their, their graves out there, that all increases the time and effort it takes for your groundskeeper to take care of that. And so it's not, it's not an easy position. And so the groundskeeper is a vital, vital part of the cemetery and um, I don't know if anybody's gotten to go out and look at the cemetery lately but it is amazing. Um, so basically um, we do want to put in a request um, that the council would um, vote that we um, move our superintendent duties and add them to the groundskeeper duties and make a superintendent groundskeeper position. Um, increases hours to 40 hours a week um, to be established with a maximum budget increase of $9,069.20. Thank you. Thank you. Butch, a question based yes, on that too. Uh, I know it's not an agenda item. Do we need to add, uh, as, I don't think we need to vote on them changing the groundkeeper, the hours, all that around. I think that's a cemetery thing but the budget the potential increase in the budget do we put that on the next agenda we should see where let me check and see where we've got it in our budget thank you and we'll do okay. the budget workshop okay. yeah. appreciate it okay. yeah thank you thank you uh, Bobby Ray building inspector update Uh, of course, I'm Bobby Ray, the building inspector. Um, as far as this past year, um, it's kind of been a touch and go situation on a lot of different issues. Um, we're, as far as contractors, this is the time of year when we send out new contractor lists. We're actually up 70 something contractors wow. on the mail out for this year. Um, I have started uh, reassessing some of our sidewalks, uh, both in residential and commercial areas, um, determining uh, the actual linear fit footage of each property, and we'll be con uh, after the first year we'll be contacting these people because this is kind of our down type of the season about making their sidewalk repairs. Um, I did meet. Uh, at the last HDC meeting, uh, something that I have been trying to do for the last probably two to three years was actually get fines assessed to uh, certain ordinances inside the municipal code book. Um, it came, in my opinion, I felt it was not right for me to actually set the fines. Um, so my first step is to uh, and I have already discussed it with HDC, which they will be discussing with Mr. Weaver. Uh, we're going to uh, set fines. It shouldn't have to be done by ordinance um, because the ordinance actually states a minimum certain charge and a maximum certain charge. Um, I did finally 
yet in our new database. Uh, it switched over on the enforcement's part that actually has the clean city slash demo by neglect demo by neglect ordinance, which I have not been able to do that. Um, it's all everything's been under uh, unsanitary conditions or unsightly conditions. Um, this year so far, we have had 19 written warnings. We haven't had any actual written vi or citations. Um, of the 19, 10 have been resolved. Um, nine of them are actually fall under the demo by neglect or the, the um, clean city ordinance. And these are ones of houses that need major repairs. And I am currently working with those people um, to get contractors in there and get some idea of what it's going to cost um, to, to make these repairs. Um, while that being said, um, I have found several, my average is probably going to say at least eight other addresses that are going to be added to that list. Um, the hard part being is a lot of these people don't live here. Um, the people that do live here that have the houses are doing the best they can and I'm working with them uh, to try to get some of this stuff done. The problem I'm having is homeowners or property owners that do not live here. Um, my next step, um, especially one of my major goals for next year, is on the demo by, by neglect or severe minimum maintenance. Um, some way that we can, uh, and it may be something that you all would have to do as far as, as setting aside a certain line item or a certain account just for the demo by, by neglect because a lot of these people that I have gotten a hold of, I'm not hearing anything back from them. So in the ordinance, it says that the city would come in and do the repairs, and they would take bids to do that. Um, in order to do that, I feel, and I could be wrong, that we need to set aside money in just an account for the demo by neglect. That would be something for you all to discuss. And... Um, as far as I've been comparing over the last few years on permits, uh, and then I know this sounds funny um, or kind of off the mark because uh, y'all were discussing budget and everything earlier. We're actually down in permits. <coughs> Money-wise, we're up. I don't know how that's, how that's come to be. Um, but uh, we are way up, and this doesn't show on the permit side of it, certificate of occupancies for new businesses. We are up almost 80 certificate of occupancies this year. And this time of year is usually the slow time of year for certificate of occupancies, and we are getting, a lot, getting them left and right. We have new businesses moving in. We have old businesses relocating. Wow. And I hope it continues because we've <laughs> still got a lot, you know, several empty stores, empty, re you know, at restaurants, hotels that uh, I would really like to see come up next year. Good. Is there any questions or anything? Just a general comment, you know, okay. about all we have is this city to promote and, and what the work you do is important for I'm, our city and I appreciate it. I'm, I'm trying and, and, and I will tell <laughs> you all you. this. Uh, one thing I did uh, start doing, of course you all know that I'm also a reserve officer. Yeah. So I come in and work a lot of weekends, cover for people, cover events. Um, I've actually found it's, it's kind of dropped off. Um, I had uh, a lot of contractors coming in from out of town. Mm -hmm. Friday nights, working all night Friday night oh. into Saturday morning, or coming in late Saturday night, working into Sunday mm -hmm. morning. Um, I've actually, while on regular patrol, um, have actually uh, six in the last two and a half months. Wow. And essentially, they were either getting a citation or they came in and got everything current. Um, so, you know, everybody, everybody's like, well, which one are you? Well, actually, I try to do both jobs at the same time. Yeah. Um, but uh, just let you know, I'm, I'm trying. I understand. Thank you. Uh -huh.
Yes. So the funds that you're asking for for the demo of I didn't neglect that would be for boarding houses, demolish. That that, that, that essentially would be to cover because um, we'd have to take bids according mm -hmm. to the yeah. ordinance, mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. But we have we have no account set aside right now as it is because that account essentially would be for the clean city ordinance which was if someone doesn't live here and they mm -hmm. uh, refuse to mow their yard or they refuse to come and and uh, paint their house or whatever the city right. would have to take bids to do that but we have nothing set aside so it, the funds would be to do <coughs> just, that just work for the clean city the ordinance and demo by, by okay. neglect okay. actually demo the demo part of it is not that big a problem because most of these people figure out real quick that it's going to cost more to fix it mm -hmm. than what it's worth even if it's a contributing and, and that's something that I, I I try to pound into mm -hmm. some of these people's uh, heads you bought this historic house it's essentially a very contributing mm -hmm. piece of a property mm -hmm. and it needs to be taken care of whether you live here or not mm -hmm. um, and I've had a few say well we would like to go in front of HDC by demo by neglect and I'm I just tell them because it's a contributing property, I doubt that's going to happen. And by this, if they don't want to do it and they just want to sit there and let it continue to deteriorate, then we can go in, do it, and then, like I said, according to the ordinance, whether it's done by lien mm -hmm. or, or whatever, but that would be for you all to set aside a, you know, whatever amount you all can, would agree on. And that, like I said, that's all that would be used for. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and once it was used, then we would lien the houses Yes. Um, to, to repay my, ourselves. My only problem with that is if you if, if you had a, a family that bought or had the place and you put a lien across against it, well, when they pass, they put it in a family trust. Um, I'm actually working on an issue right like that right now. It was originally uh, the letter went out to the owner. The owner passed, but it, the house was put in a family trust before he passed. So now I'm having to deal with the people that are in the trust. Right, following the okay, and and they, for example, they are one of them that was like, no, we want to fix it up. Well, now that they've started trying to fix it up, they're finding out it's costing them way more to fix this house up than mm -hmm. what they could turn around as soon as they're done with it and sell it for. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Bobby, what do you think? Five, ten, twenty, fifty thousand needs to be in that account. What would be? I, we don't know. I would honestly say. It, we're going to have more issues with your bigger homes, your your more de uh, depleted homes. I guess you would call them uh, that are in severe need. The typical girl, you know, grass too high and all that. Well, that's nothing. Like I said, most normally everybody takes care of that. I've actually had a few that tried to get somebody. Um, I talked to the person that they were going to have come mow it for them. And they got busy, couldn't do it. I actually brought my lawnmower and weed eater, came over and mowed it myself. You know, I, that's the way I am. And uh, I would say probably anywhere, like I said, whatever y'all want, but t between 20 and 50, probably. Do we have resources available for owners who get in a situation with, they get into a house that's over their head? Um, so that they are <coughs> able to um, transfer it easily to uh, uh, to someone else who can take care of it. I, is there and yeah, well, we don't necessarily have a program for that. Um, I've got a couple properties that are in the process of doing that. Um, I've actually uh, through uh, Glenna Booth a couple of uh, properties that the people that own them do not have the money to fix mm -hmm. the house that they live in. Mm -hmm. um, gave them both the paperwork. It was a, a zero matching grant mm -hmm. um, and everything. And one of them got approved. The house is already being, being worked on. The other one, I have yet to hear anything from. Mm -hmm. Any, anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Thank Bob. you. Uh, that brings us up to uh, public comments.
good evening. Um, I'm Cameron Denauer. I'm a local shop owner, um, both service and retail at the Baron Barber. I mean, most of y'all know it takes a lot to get me out of my cage um, <laughs> until I get really irritated, and well, now I'm really irritated. Um, I cannot believe what is going on with this Christmas night market. You have got to be kidding me that all of the businesses downtown were not notified prior. Hey, we've got this idea. We'd like to do this. What do you think about this? Can we get you to participate? Instead, 10 days ago, we get, you're going to do this. This is what we're doing. And in front of your storefront, if you want to participate, we're going to charge you X amount of dollars or we're going to put it on a booth up in front of your business. Now, that by definition is extortion when you're trying to get somebody to pay for something that they already have. And it's wrong. People pay high rent prices for their brick and mortar retail spaces throughout Eureka Springs. With that high rent, you're paying for not only the building, but you're paying for its visibility, you're paying for its charm, you're paying for its history. And then to have some organization come along and tell these people, we're going to affect this. You have no say in it. We're not going to ask it. We're telling you this is what we're doing. Is wrong. Grossly mishandled in every single possible way. Then when you go to this organization and you say, this has been grossly mishandled in every possible way, you get your input is welcome through participation. This is by their chairperson. Not stopping to think that you get participation by allowing people to have input in the first place. This is the type of leadership that we're going to have sub-organizations carrying on in Eureka Springs and affecting people's businesses. Then I read the articles in the newspaper and I hear a lot of speculation. There's no facts. Well, what if it brings a thousand people in it? We don't know that. Oh, sales, this is the worst retail season or time weekend of the season. Nobody's asked for our numbers. How the heck would you know that? Speculation. It's wrong. It needs to stop or it needs to be reorganized, not next year, but immediately for this one. There are a lot of upset retailers. They're looking at blacking out windows. They're looking at turning out lights. They're looking at picketing. You decide how you're going to correct this situation. Paul Jasinski, 46 Hillside. What he said was 100% true. Uh, last March, I had spent 10 minutes speaking with Mike Maloney at the CAPC with regard to the uh, issue of night out uh, and with regard to what mountain towns do in other areas of the country. They have what's called Noel or Yule Nights. And the idea of that is to get people into town and into the shops, into the shops. And how do they do it? As I explained, what they do is they give away free food and free soft drinks. In other words, they give cookies, brownies, quiches away, and they'll give deep discounts on the merchandise. That's what gets the people into shops. It is an insult to all the shop owners in the town that somebody's going to set up booths or tents in front of their shops. That's not going to get them into the door. This is what works in other towns. And by the way, they do it midweek. Why don't they do it on the weekend? Look, the town is already packed on the week. There's no parking on Saturday anyway. You don't need to bring the people in on Saturday. That's why they usually do it on a Wednesday night. Anyway, uh, I, I gave you two handouts. One had to do with uh, what we need to do is to fix the murals. Every time I go to the post office, when you go to the post office and look up and you see that fading five cents for Coca-Cola, it makes me depressed for two reasons. Number one, it's fading away. Number two, I remember when you could get a Coke for five cents. <laughs> uh, in the handout, I gave you two things here which with regard to what planning is proposing for changes in the zoning code. Uh, there are numerous issues they haven't touched upon. And uh, as you might have 
read my emails, I think, where they have touched upon it. My advice is leave the code alone. It was written by attorneys who knew what they were doing. You can't give it to a bunch of amateurs and expect a professional job. I'm not trying to, you know what I'm saying, downgrade the hard work they've done, but the code was written by attorneys, and it made a lot of sense to me. Anyway, uh, the other thing is there's no even proposals to regulate vacation rentals, not even for smoke alarms and uh, uh, CO2 detectors. And as we know, we had a fire in the city. This is why it's important to have these because I just got my notice. My, my insurance rates are going up, and for the very same reason, more claims, higher insurance rates. But uh, if vacation rentals need to be, uh, or, or it's a good idea to, uh, you know, to regulate vacation rentals, as uh, shown by the 15-page Fort Lauderdale ordinance, which is Exhibit A. Exhibit B shows that Vail is basically copying what Fort Lauderdale has done. If it's good enough for Vail, it's good enough for Fort Lauderdale. It should be good enough for Eureka, since we do have so many vacation rentals here. And all the points raised by the uh, Airbnb people about not disclosing the identities, all that is gone. Airbnb is completely capitulated. They've caved in on their lawsuits. You can force them to disclose the identities and therefore force these people to pay taxes and better yet the back taxes that they owe for all the years that they operated without licenses and without collecting taxes. I got three, two, one, and to go. <laughs> oh, just one last thing. I, I did, I mentioned uh, the sidewalks and, and uh, it was mentioned here, you know, with your building inspector here, this is an example of what uh, lanes and the cities have gone to line down the sidewalks. I to Thanks. Good evening. I'm Jack Moyer. I am the chairman of the Main Street program. Uh, and, of course, I'm also the general manager of the Crescent in the Basin Park Hotel. I've been on Spring Street for 22 uh, years, and I thought I would share with you some of the facts associated with the night market. Uh, its origins came from a visit to the National Main Street uh, Conference that myself and Jackie Woven and Amanda Haley attended. And the basis of the market is built off the Squirrel Hill market. It's a shopping event. That's the core element is a shopping event. We brought that idea back to our board. We have a, a very well-established Main Street board. There are individuals that all have businesses in, in the uh, downtown area. The board vetted that and developed the shopping event meant to not conflict with the existing shopping uh, that happens in the district, hence the term night market. The night market will be open from 4 p.m. until 9 p.m. at night. Uh, it will be partnered with the Living Windows, and I think you guys know the Living Windows event. It's very dynamic. That's why it needs to be on Spring Street. And we're trying to create a signature event for the uh, Christmas season that says Eureka is open during this whole period. Uh, we had a permit. It was issued in September. Uh, we did uh, talk to the department heads in advance of that. Uh, I uh, met with Thomas Acord, uh, Jackie Woven, uh, met with the transit department, and I placed a phone call to the fire department. Uh, we have gone under contract with the Cattywampus uh, market. It's purposely intended not to conflict with existing retailers. Jamie Brandt uh, was the individual who went out, researched what market would be non-competitive, uh, and that's how we reached out to them. We've also <coughs> hired musicians. This is a success for our city. The Christmas Committee starts months ago. The Christmas Committee is inclu uh, includes the Parks Department, the City, the CAPC, the Chamber, and the Main Street component. Uh, that is how Christmas happens. There's a lot of work that happens in advance of Christmas. Uh, all the lights, things to that extent. Uh, the mayor received some, some calls, and he asked uh, for Jackie. Uh, to go out and poll some of the merchants. I took half of my uh, uh, day and I walked shops. Uh, our Main Street board walked for two days up and down the streets. I was very, very pleased with the overwhelmingly positive uh, response that we received uh, for that. We then uh, met with the mayor. He convened a meeting. Uh, Bobby Ray was there. Thomas Acorn was there. Mike Maloney was there. Uh, the mayor vetted the event, I believe. I won't put words in your mouth. I'm sure you'll, you'll be speaking to it. Uh, but we left there with a, an approval to continue forward. We then had a community meeting. Over 50 people attended to that community meeting. That was the meeting I invited you to, uh, to ask questions, to learn more information about the event, and to also hear how the collaboration, what should be happening in our city, our chamber, our CAPC, the Main Street program, the Parks Department, working together to bolster Christmas. That was presented. This signature event is a component 
to tell everyone that Christmas happens. Uh, I appreciate you supporting the process, supporting the mayor. I do uh, need to let you know I have to leave by 7.30, so if there's questions, I'd be happy to answer, but I didn't know even that we were having this today. Thank you for allowing me to talk. Is that it? All right. Uh, thank you all. The um, next item on our... Chairman? Yes. I move to reconsider the vote on the motion relating to moving the city meetings to the community center. I voted in favor of that motion. Okay. Uh, we got a motion. I need a second. I'll second that point. Okay. Um, the motion we got to, we vote to, for the reconsideration. Bob uh, voted uh, in the positive manner. And so, um, is there any questions or comments? Mr. Mayor. On this? Robert's Rules of Order says that when there's an impending motion on the table, You're right. the I'm person sorry, who Bob. brings the motion should be the first one to speak to it. Okay. Well, can I have a vote first? On what? On whether or not to hear your motion. Well, the motion is to reconsider. That's right. And there should be discussion on okay. that motion. Go ahead. Yes, well, sir. as the mayor said, I was confused last week. I was actually physically ill, and I did vote opposite of what I intended to vote. Uh, and at the last meeting, I tried to, to request reconsideration, and I was told I couldn't, but that was an error because you actually could. <coughs> Since then, the, I read the two newspaper articles, and if you read their headlines, one of them says that the council voted to permanently relocate to the community center, and then the other one says that the council voted to move forward with drafting a lease that would come back for approval. So I think even the newspapers did not come out with the same, same uh, idea of what we voted on. I think there was confusion all the way around, and that's why I think we need to reconsider that, that uh, decision. Any other comments? David? Would, um, would the city clerk uh, tell us exactly what Bob's motion was again, and then I have a comment? This last one? The one that, that, that we're discussing now? Yes, sir. The one we're discussing now that, okay. was, that he had presented at the last meeting. I'd just like to hear it again. It was Mr. McClung's motion. No, you, but you had an amendment. Tonight. My amendment was voted down, and then we voted on Mr. McClung's motion. So that's what we're talking about, Mr. McClung? Correct. Th thank you. Okay. I just, that's what I needed to clear up. What we it was exactly, I um, was wanted to clear up, up here because it's not clear. So again, the motion was to go with the proposal that the foundation presented that was that piece of paper. And then it had two options on the bottom. But we could either keep up the grounds or we could do some stuff. And we never really clarified mm -hmm. that. So we really didn't even pick one of those two options at the bottom. We just approved the, uh, the concept that they gave us, ma'am, or what was it? There were several things happening simultaneously, and when Mr. McClung made the motion, he didn't specify which of the two options. Yes, that's what I think. And so that helped create some of the confusion. There was also a misunderstanding on what the amendment meant. So that's why I was very careful to write down the exact sequence of events mm -hmm. anticipating that this might come up it doesn't change Bob's position on wanting to change his vote yes ma'am I got it now. I mean I could read the sequence no. but it would you would it would I'm still be <laughs> I'm clear now it's, okay it's the it's the original one not the amendment I got it okay yeah. correct I'm okay. May okay. I say one thing? Yes, sir. <coughs> the the motion, um, the gist of the motion was for the city to uh, enter into a lease or have a lease drawn up uh, with one or with either of those options as best fitted. And it was, you know, it wasn't it wasn't exactly specified at that meeting because they hadn't talked about which was the best way, whether it was going to be you know, with uh, in-kind 
services or the cash, but it was, you know, that that part was was pretty small. And and the, and and any lease is reviewable by a city attorney, but it's not something that's that's correct and kosher. Then then of course we're not going to sign something that's not right. And that's that, and that's the way we left it. Let Christy go first. Christy, I, I'm I I was not present, so I'm really confused as to what was going on. Um, the the proposal that was given to us by the Community Center Foundation um, does not, unless I'm missing something, doesn't discuss whether the room is exclusive to the city or not. Um, though I had understood that, yeah, that it was in in the minutes, but I don't know it whether the not. motion that was made was well, okay, was the motion um, on the non-exclusive basis? Correct. Correct. If you will read okay, the thank sequence you. of events, those answers will... I did. I did. I, Correct. I did. Correct. I did. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. The, we approved the minutes earlier. And this is from the minutes that we have now approved. It says, Mr. McClung moved to choose the community center for the meetings as soon as space is available. Mm -hmm. That so, was the motion. So is your current motion to reconsider your vote on, on the original motion? The re correct. That's what I was trying to... Okay, thank you. Okay, further discussion? Yes, sir. I, my concern with this whole, whole thing is not... <coughs> a negative towards the foundation or the concept of the community center or nothing. I'm having a problem with the order in the way that we're approaching this. <coughs> and it seems to me when I look at this situation, I would have thought that we would have approached the school board to ask about the property before we decided to jump into an arrangement with the foundation and then I know we're going to have some more discussion here but right now <clears throat> the way I look at it or we did at one time have the fire station North Street potentially we could have stayed here that and then we also had the community center so there was about four options that, that were floating around out there and it seemed to me that we should have at least heard from the school board whether it was going to come to the city or not. And then in the packet, I find something that really surprises me, and this is probably out of order. The city would gain ownership but not management of the site, therefore it would not have the option of allocating space. And I'm sure that's going to come up in a minute. So I'm having a lot of difficulty. And you look at the minutes now, unfinished, we're talking about Dr. Beard's interest in lease before we talk about the Attorney General's opinion, before we talk about the school board, and then we discuss the community. It, it just seems out of sequence to me. It's almost like it's predetermined that we're going with the community center, and I'm, I'm just not, I'm having difficulty with it. Yes, ma'am. That's it. Terry prefaced his motion by stating the fact that we needed to hurry up and take some kind of action because the year was waning and therefore he made a motion that we accept moving to the community center the details to be worked out later that's basically all the motion was we're saying yes it will be the community center as opposed to the thousands that would do the fire department and the fact that Dr. Beard was wanting to keep his place but we had to make a positive movement and that's basically all that motion was supposed to be meaning. Mr. McClung? Uh, the, um, the foundation, you know, if, if, and I don't expect the school board to give us anything, I truly don't, but even if the school board said, here you go, Mr. Mayor. You can have the school property and good riddance. 
is still subject to the lease of, of the foundation. And they have control of it. They can't, I mean, it's not something that they can just uh, unilaterally uh, break. I mean, they're, they're, they're in contract with it. So it doesn't matter if they gave it to us or not. Bob, you had Oh, I was just going back to the fact that I'm regretting my vote. During the discussion, the city attorney actually advised us or subtly advised us that the motion was not appropriate as it was and suggested that we change it. And uh, I think we all ignored his advice when we voted for it. Christy. One thing that has bothered me throughout this whole conversation is it seems like this donation of the community center property has jumped up and has somehow gotten itself wrapped up in our meeting space. And to me, it should be entirely different issue unless there's something that I'm not being told about. Um, I, the you know, in, we're being offered a lease by the community center um, for our meeting space. And I, I, I don't know how the donation fits into this, and yet it keeps on coming up in this conversation. And would, would somebody please explain to me how the donation fits into this? Because... We're talking about making a, a donation to the foundation? Just give them some money. If that's no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> the do donation by the school board that was of, the, of the high school property to the city. How does that fit in with our me meeting space discussion? David? That's, that's the mayor. Well, it should answer that one, probably. It, it probably didn't until this little sentence appeared in this thing we got here. That, that the ownership but the management of the site. So if we had known this all along, the, the, the issue about the donation and all wouldn't fit in because this changes a, a whole lot of the way the property is. The second part is it was no urgent thing to do. Once we moved the meetings over here and achieved ADA compliance and started closed captioning this particular meeting, which is, is the one that we're televising, although we're televising all of them, we're closed captioning this one, we started meeting the requirements of, of the ADA. I don't know if it's 100% or 90 or whatever, but we started meeting the most of it. And so this moving here took the immediacy of finding a place to meet off, off of the table. I, I think we're, we're we're all getting sidetracked here. Well, not it, really, because well, I mean, what's the, what we're talking about is is the, the discussing whether or not we want to go ahead and, and rehear the can, motion. Yeah, and we can. I mean, this yeah. all ties together. Okay. In in one problem. sense, and you, you know, it's confusing as it is. Uh, I think the first thing we need to do uh, is find out whether or not we want to redo the vote, Mickey. Like I said before, it all boils down to is taking a positive action on a piece of property that we know we can get, whereas the others we either cannot get or it's going to cost too much to get. Therefore, we need to make a positive movement and we can work out details later. All right, any further discussion on rehearing the vote? Redoing the vote? All right. Uh, all those in favor of Revoting or roll call, please. Uh, what's the, what's the vote on moving the reconsidering the vote. Reconsidering the vote. Yes. All right. Have a roll call. Bob Thomas. Yes. Christy Kendrick. Yes. David Mitchell. Yes. Terry McClung. Nope. Yes. Mickey Snyder. Nope. Three two. What does the attorney say? Attorney doesn't have anything to say. We have to wait. Oh. Yeah, I, it's it's my you know whether or not to rehear it. I'm I'm still in favor of uh, going ahead with as as it was voted the last time. So I'm not going to vote. Motion fails. So, okay. Uh, <coughs> We had at the beginning of the meeting 
an opportunity, and we can rearrange our agenda any way we want. And, uh, I'm thinking of what Mr. Mitchell was talking about in order how this is being progressed and through here. So if we want to talk about Dr. Beard's lease later on, I would still entertain a motion to defer that to a later time, or we can bring that up now. Mickey? Um, since all of the unfinished business is about the, the school property and stuff, could we move the, the Spring Street discussion to number one, get that out of the way, because we have a lot of people here for that? Mm -hmm. Could we get that done, and then we can spend the rest of the meeting <coughs> on the school stuff? I'm assuming it's in your old business, because it brought it up at the last meeting. Thank you, pardon? The thing I had in, added to the agenda about this event in December? Right, that's at the Right, can we make beginning. that number one instead of number five under the unfinished business? That's up to the council. Well, I'm, that's what I'm asking because then the rest of it's all school. Mr. McConnell, or community. Well, I suggest you go ahead and combine two and three and, and, and hear them and get them over with. Let's, let's, let's go. Uh, let's hear two and three first. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's Is everybody in favor of that? I mean, they're. they're okay the same topic anyway for all practical purposes so excuse me i don't they understand are. how they are the same topic um how is giving the old high school to the city related to our meeting space well i think the motion i mean what we can either go as the, as the agenda is right now or we can combine item or we can talk about two and three first I mean, it's up to the council how they want to handle this. What about moving Spring Street up? I didn't get a second on that. Oh, I didn't make a motion. Do I need to make a motion? Okay, I make a motion that we move the discussion on the agenda up to number one because we have several people here in regards to that. And then we can go ahead and do all the other stuff together however you want to. Second. Thank you. All right, we've got a motion to uh, to move the events of uh, Spring Street up to uh, discussion of uh, number one under unfinished business. Uh, all those in favor, sing five or saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. Abstain. No. Three, two. Two, two, one, it fails. Three two. All right. Uh, no two two one. Okay two two one. Mr. Mr. Mayor, yes sir. We're going to sit here and pull around with this. Let's just go with the agenda as it's written and just proceed with the meeting. Okay, let's go. All right. The, um, everybody got a copy of Norris uh, the lease that I just got in the paper or in the mail today from uh, Dr. Beard's attorney. Hmm? Uh, no, no, no. You didn't receive. Oh. I just got a copy. I'm sorry. The newest, the latest thing was whether or not, and this is just Tim's tip for Tim. Uh, they want a clarification on whether or not the council can can uh, determine the lease or whether it's a hospital commission. And I don't know whether Tim's whether to give that opinion or not. Uh, yes, I. We'll stand by what I've said before, that ultimately the council controls all city property for the long-term lease of something. I believe it has to come before this board unless you want to delegate that power. Um, if, and it wa if it was delegated, as the attorney for Dr. Beard suggests, back some 40, 50 years ago, um, I think this council clearly could decide that uh, that delegation was not followed through with uh, because when the payments were stopped being received by the city, no one notified the city council that they were no longer receiving the benefit of the property and that it could have been addressed at that time. So I think it falls back in the lap of the city council to dictate whether there is a lease 
who that lease is with and who the terms are with or what the terms are. Yes, David. <clears throat> well, the attorney's come in to... Uh, he's made his opinion and he's, he's stuck with it and I appreciate it. You know, the only thing... It's amazing how Dr. Beard's attorney has all these interesting points to make when it, it's appropriate for her and her client. But all we have that's been supplied to us is an old lease from 91 to 94 for $275 a month that they provided us. There's been no other lease. So technically, since 1994, Dr. Beard, as far as we know, has been in his office without a proven lease, a secondary lease of any type, just word. <coughs> And we don't know the amount of money that he was raised from $275 a month to, to whatever supposedly. We don't know at what point this negotiation that we hear about for putting in an HVAC system and a uh, new roof or whatever it was came to be. So if we go back to 94, <coughs> let's just say 95, he put the HVAC system in and all that. Why hasn't he paid rent? after he paid off that stuff. Why hasn't rent been paid up to this day? Not a penny. There's quite a bit of money that is owed by the person that was the leasee to this city for a piece of property. What, what's going on? What, what kind of a, you know, a, a person just sits in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a building that's owned by somebody else and just doesn't pay the lease? I mean, that's just, there's just it's just wrong, and I think we should, if we even consider a lease with the, the person that's occupying that building now, we should consider a payment, a back payment of <coughs> money that is owed, and it's it's also built into it some way, shape, or form because all these years of paying nothing is totally inappropriate and unethical. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when we start, first started talking about Norris Street, um, I had been advised, and I think the rest of council, that um, the hospital condition had been, um, had offers for $2,000 a month. And um, I do not understand why we are not considering such offers. Um, Right now, this property has been sitting, while we've been discussing this, um, uh, completely um, non, making no money whatsoever over the last at least couple of months and for many months before that. I don't find Dr. Beard being very forthcoming. He has not explained to us how much the cost of the um, air conditioning in the roof was. Um, we're supposed to presume that it was enough um, to permit him to go for years without paying rent. I don't know that he is a desirable lessee. I'd like to consider other lessees at this point. Any further comments? I have a question. Yes, sir. Is, is what was submitted by their attorney, is it, is it a lease proposal or is it... Or is we have not received any nothing lease proposal. Yeah. Well, uh, I submitted a lease to them. Right. I uh, recall that. Well, as as I stated in when when I made the motion in the last meeting, was that you know is that we we have to make a determination on where we're going to stay, and, and apparently we've done that, and and there, so the lease is going to be negotiated between Mr. Weaver and yourself and. And, and the foundation, so that takes care of that. So I have to agree with her. I, you know, if uh, if he's not willing to cooperate, and 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 you've got somebody else that's willing to pay that kind of money, uh, you know, I, I I would I would keep it at, at like five year intervals and something like that. But, but yeah, let's let's start getting the money in. Okay. Uh, I guess I need a motion uh, to 
do. Um, I guess what you what I heard you say, Mr. McClung, was for Mr. Weaver and I to negotiate with Dr. Beard on the lease. Mm -hmm. what, what was your motion? You, Are you, I can make a motion if you'd like, okay. and, and she's wanting to say something. I'd like to uh, make a motion okay. um, that we pursue um, as many offers to lease the property as possible um, through the hospital commission as well as from Dr. Beard. Though, and that's as far as my motion. Okay. I'll second that. Mr. Trung has a question formulating. Well, I'm, just, right? I'm just, uh, I'm not exactly sure I'd, I'd word it like that, but I, you know, yeah, I think, I think we need to, you know, uh, make it available. I don't know that the hospital commission has anything to do with it, but. No, but I meant the people that they had in mind. I would well, it's, it's the, hospi the hospital yeah. is interested in leasing. Yeah, the hospital itself is interested in, in oh, leasing. Oh, yes. I just don't okay. understood. Yeah. I thought not the hospital. The hospital not the hospital. Yeah. It's, it's, no. it's, it's the tenants. Okay. Yeah. Hospital. Well, and they can pay rent to us too. Sure. It, it, yeah, it's clear without the hospital commission because if they're not, if they can't any any type of lease, which they shouldn't be, then it, it definitely should be just. It's open now. Any lease that is is brought forward is that going to come to council, or is it, are you giving the authority to well, the mayor to do it? I think I think well I think I think the the mayor can negotiate the lease. I mean we kind of have that two thousand dollar figure in mind. If they come in with something less than that, he can certainly bring it to us. But but I I, I think that the the that's key is is we keep it to like five years or something like that, and and red flag somehow so it it doesn't repeat the same history that it just went through and, and get lost in the well, shuffle. But you then know. why do we have resolutions or something come about the, the courthouse space and the parking lease? That's that because we're leasing that, that in the county. Not well. in private. So you do, you do private leases without council? No. I get the council approval because we're paying the county money to lease the property. But on other leases? I don't know when we have other leases. I'm just trying, trying to figure out the authority for leasing. Does Mr. it need to come to council or can it, it stay with the mayor? There have been in the past and they all came before council. I think okay, that's thank yeah. you. Just check. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out where we're at. Okay. okay. Ms. Kendrick? I, I would um, perhaps add to my motion that I would like um, the mayor to bring back offers to lease the property. And um, well, I think that, that would go without saying. Well, and um, to yeah. explain, okay. I'm uh, a the addition to my motion is I believe that perhaps there are more desire some other factors than pure rent that may be involved in our deciding who to lose to. Could okay. you restate your motion? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, I would like to move that the mayor um, Garner offers to lease the property, the North Street property, and bring them back to the council for consideration. Thank and you. I will second that. Thank if you. that's appropriate. I Mr. Weaver? Stand. If I might make a suggestion. <laughs> I would uh, suggest that since the entity now wishing to lease Dr. Beard is trying to say that the commission has the authority to lease, that you place in your motion a statement that the council not recognize any other entity's ability to lease the property at this time, thereby preventing a document to potentially be signed that may have to be voided through a court action. I hope that the hospital commission would not take such a step. I would hope so um, too, but that's without a direction, I feared that it might not. Okay, I will add that um, that that the mayor also make it very clear to any potential lessees that the council alone has the power to lease this property. Is that response? Council alone and not the hospital commission. You want let's let's start all over. It's <laughs> whoever okay. I will second it with Gaia second. Let's restate the motion, me. please. <laughs> I can word well, it for you. Is that, is that where you're going? Mayor. 
May or not, counsel? Uh, Mr. I think Attorney, I've got is it. that what you were looking for? Uh, something along that line. Okay. <laughs> I, I think I've got it. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that the mayor with the city attorney entertain lease proposals for the North State process and that the leaseor is only the city of Eureka Springs under the mayor and city council. Second. Does okay. that work, sir? Does everybody understand the motion? Any further comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. We'll do. All right. Uh, get a motion to discuss the um, AG's opinion. So moved. Actually, I'd like to go ahead and combine the two. I mean, we're going to be talking about both of them. Uh, so moved. So I'll moved. Look at that. All right. Uh, first of all, I, I would like an explanation as to how ownership of the old high school property is relevant to our leasing meeting space from the foundation. I'm not sure it is, but... Um, then why are we combining it? And we're not. We're giving the AG's opinion and the school board's feedback. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I got it. <coughs> I, I Everybody got a copy that. of the AG's opinion. Uh, I was asked also to get the school board feedback, and that's real simple. I've got a date set up for January 6th, I believe. It's actually our first meeting date in January. They meet on the first Monday of the month <laughs> to be on the agenda. So I'm going to be meeting with them at 5 o'clock on the 6th to January see if they 6th? are interested. What? January 6th? Whatever the first Monday in January is. Oh, okay, that would be eight. Uh, <clears throat> so first meeting date. Uh, yeah, that would be eight. And uh, <clears throat> so I don't know what their feeling are is about the school board about donating the uh, the school property to the city. Uh, I know there's one or two members that are interested in it. Uh, but I know also, uh, as Mr. McClung no noted, there's probably some that aren't. Uh, the Attorney General's opinion, I don't know if y'all read through that, mm -hmm. notes that they can give the property to the school if it's on education or community benefit. Mm -hmm. Ms. Kendricks? What are we trying to achieve by considering the donation of the high school to the city? Uh, if by giving it to the city, uh, they become eligible for grants. The foundation would uh, be uh, saving roughly a half a million dollars, or whatever the purchase price, four hundred thousand, whatever the school purchase price is, uh, and they would be able to put that money into the fundraising, into developing the community center also be eligible for matching grants which right now they are not eligible for because it's a non-profit organization. The grants that they're available for uh, are basically only available to municipal governments. Uh, there's also the opportunity if we get the property that we could move uh, and it's just a possibility and we'd have to figure out whether or not we can afford it uh, and work out some sort of a deal because of moving the city offices up to there, to the school. The downside of that is that their foundation had developed a financial plan that dictates that building, I want to say 100, uh, as a rental income to pay for... Um, and to make the community center uh, self-sufficient without any contributions from the city. When we first started this project, or when the foundation did, I wasn't elected mayor yet, and they had uh, appointed me and said something, would the city be interested? I said, we couldn't afford it if you gave it to us. And that developed the foundation. 
to come up with a financial plan on how to make that project self-sufficient and work financially feasible without the city donating or contributing any financial money into the project. <laughs> so it's a two-fold thing. I don't know whether we, could, we would move up there. I don't know if we could financially, but that's where this all comes about. There's a lot of opportunities there if the city has the ownership of the building. Mr. Mitchell? Yes, two, two points, and, and this is just, maybe it's a very simplistic view, but it seems to me like the, the tax-paying citizens of this town paid for the old high school with, with tax. Not the city, the no, district. The district paid for it. Which is Holiday Island all the way right out. out. Okay. So Every, everything west okay. of the Kings River. Okay. So, if the, say the school district all of a sudden takes a look and says, you know, all these taxpayers really paid for the old high school and all these taxpayers really paid for the new high school. So in essence, the schools belong to the taxpayers and by giving this property to the city to develop this community center, we are in essence giving back property that was paid for by taxpayers. And then my other point would be if say they, <coughs> the school district does give the property to the city which then allows the community, the, the foundation, not to have to pay four hundred thousand dollars, twenty thousand a year over twenty years, frees up all that money to to work on the community center. Wouldn't you think that the foundation would be so enamored with the city that they could give us that lousy little meeting room? <laughs> Separate it issue. sits there. No, I'm not finished yet. All right. okay. It sits right there on the side if we put the, the walkway and everything in because if you turn to the left, there's a really large room there that makes a wonderful meeting room and leave this lousy little tiny <laughs> meeting room for the city. I mean, come on. That's my comment. All Thank things you. are possible. I had some I'm comments down here first. Mr. Sure. McClellan? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I agree with you, Mr. Mayor, that that uh, if if the school was to just turn it over to the the city, why uh, you know with the foundation having control of it, it's you know we we can't pay for it, and 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 the foundation might be able to, and they might not, and that's a risk that that I've never been willing to take. And when it was considered where, when it was brought up recently about them giving it to us, it was with the, with the idea of moving city offices up there and, you know, where we all we'd have to do is go up there and remodel and, and have, have office space and, and more accessible and, and, and all those good things. That was the, that was the only enticement in, in having them give it to us in the first place for me. That, that made it, a, you know, a sound idea. Uh, you know, with the foundation, you know, still, uh, you know, if they're going to play, if they're going to keep control of everything like, like they say they would, then it, it's not it's not a good deal for the city. I, I don't believe. Uh, but uh, but it doesn't take away from still leasing the uh, the other and, and because I, I mean I don't think the school board is going to give it to us and then good luck at the meeting on the sixth or eighth or. Whenever it is you go, and, and uh, that's just my thoughts. Yes, ma'am. Um, in regards to David's first thing, I've been saying that for five years, ever since their first meeting. Um, it's my understanding, and I may have this turned around so you guys don't have to tell me. City owned property, do we pay, does the city pay taxes no. on that? Okay. So if the school board gave us the old school property, we would not have to pay taxes on it, right? Yeah. Right? Right. Okay. So what I had talked to several of the um, foundation, to the community center foundation people about was if the school board, who does not own it, gives it to the city for our benefits, 
which is what they should be doing, hint, hint, if they give it to us, then the foundation no longer has to pay 20000 a year. They are now able to get a slew of big money grants That's because it's city property. They could let us have, whether it's the one little building or the big one, doesn't matter, but they could let us have that one, we'll say that little building, for exclusive use, which is a real big thing for an awful lot of us. Exclusive use only. They can continue to do all of their fundraising like they've been doing. They just don't have to spend 20000 a year. And they get extra grant money. To me, that's like a triple plus. This is what I think should be done for the community. And I don't see that the city would be having to spend much more than the sidewalk payment thing, you know, to get those handicapped sidewalks. I don't know what else we'd be doing because they would still be totally in charge of keep of the upkeep and everything else. Ms. Kendry? If we were to accept the donation of the old high school property, it would be subject to the lease to the foundation. The foundation would be in total control of the use of the property. Um, and right now, that their um, plan uh, includes using the Building 100 as um, basically the source of their funding um, to support the entire community center. I don't see, under that plan, I don't see how the city would benefit at all. Now, perhaps if you were to say, if we were to accept it and the foundation were to rework their plan because no longer do they have to pay this $40,000 a year, then it might make sense. But as it is right now, we are, would be accepting a piece of property that another entity controls that we really don't know very much about what their plan is. Um, I haven't seen their books and records. Um, I think it's, it would be extremely dangerous to take on this um, possible, the ownership of this building uh, without having done our due diligence um, about what the plans are for this building or the, the entire property and um, how the, how the uh, foundation is doing and what their plans are. Yes, sir. I just have a question. I don't understand how, if the city got the property, the foundation would keep control of the property but be released from their $20,000 a year payment? Why, why would they be released from that? The, the lease is it. there on the property. Yeah. They're, they're buying and, um, it. And it, the lease is recorded in the real estate records that if we accept the property it is subject to that lease and that lease is to buy the property is it yes mm -hmm. so they would still be buying it under the terms of the lease they would be paying the city instead of the school yes but, oh well that's you know, well it's not what <laughs> which is a whole different ball game mm -hmm. yeah thank you mm -hmm. any astute deal maker would let the community center know if you really want this property for the community center then you will allow us to take over the ownership of the property we will let you out of your 20,000 a year you will let us have our building or we will not accept the offer from the school board that's how deals are made you have an existing lease you say you need to change your lease Everybody would be fine and happy if the school board wanted to get rid of it. Ms. Kendrick? You would also know a lot more information about the people that you would be doing business with. Oh, that's, um, right that's now, a given. Right now, I haven't seen their books and records. I haven't seen their current mm -hmm. plans. I would feel extremely uncomfortable accepting a donation but without that's a knowing given. a lot more information about the people that I would be uh, Guys, they're going to have a hard time transcribing this if we can keep it down to one person at a time, please. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lassard's here representing the foundation. I think 
You had a... Yes, Black Lassiter with the Community Center Foundation. Uh, our books and everything are very transparent. Anytime you want to look at them, they're available. Uh, but I would like to say we're doing this for the community. You know, Eureka Springs, the surrounding area. The more of us that get involved in this project, I mean, the greater success we're going to have. If the school board gives the property to the city, it opens us up to hundreds of grant possibilities that will, you know, maybe bring a pool, trail systems. It just frees us up. And it's a, this would be a wonderful partnership between us that we could do something for our city that's a big win for all of us. And I know a lot of people are negative about it. They think it's going to fail. But at the end of the day, this is for people like my daughter and the other kids that need a place for after school, for, you know, recreation. And I just wish we would get on board with this because I think it's going to really improve our city. Mr. Mitchell? I beg to differ with the except that we are on board with this. We just are concerned about the details and the flow of it. So if Ms. Kendricks is correct and the lease moves over and you have a lease purchase and then the property becomes ours, so then the lease is to be to the city for 20000 a year for 400000 which we would probably at some point negotiate something with you. We still go back to the fact that we just wanted a, a, de a dedicated meeting space, and somehow that seems to be a big issue <laughs> for us. And well, or no one and, and won't even to bother us no, why you need just, a dedicated meeting space. Why should if you we would have explain to, to me? Sure, oh, I, I would, can go back uh, to the board why, and push for why that, would but we, I need a rationale. Why would we have to, to, to do that when we would be sitting in the ownership of the property and we're negotiating? Is that a negotiating factor with the foundation or not? Well, Is it or here's, not? The, so here's the financial model. We've got this carefully planned out how we are going to be self-sufficient. If you start carving off blocks of that building for the city, uh -huh. it damages our financial model, we've got to figure out a new f financial so source. You'll stand there and say that for one little tiny room at the end, it's not even affecting your other ability. You actually would be willing to, to, that the city couldn't take over the ownership of that property, get you out of a $400,000 debt for a lousy little room at the corner. Well, Is that, that what you're saying? That lousy little room still has to have oh. heating and air, has to be maintained. I got it. I, I mean, we're trying our best. <laughs> I know I talked to Diane. The the keeping of an exclusive room, like I tried to explain to Diane, the biggest thing is it's ours and nobody else can play with our toys. Okay, this is basically what it comes down to. I mean, it's more serious than that, but that's what it is. But if the lease is renegotiated, I like the idea of the city getting twenty thousand a year, David. But I don't think that's what it's about, and it shouldn't be. This isn't supposed to be a plan for the city to get money. It's supposed to be a plan for the community, for us to do things together. And I just really, really feel if we have that little room and it's strictly ours and you're not having to pay 20000 a year and you're getting grant money, all of that should more than cover that little teeny one room. That's my big deal. That's my but only problem with this. I need stuff. a reason to take to my board why that because has to be Because you're going to get dedicated. a billion dollars. Because no in other place space is that. dedicated we, for a council. We may be again. We may be putting the horse before the cart. We don't even know if we're getting the building yet. The horse goes before the cart. Before the cart before the horse. So, <laughs> all right. Whichever. We still got the horse. Cart before the horse. Um, <laughs> So, Mr. McLeod? <laughs> yeah, you know, here again, we're, it's just all conjecture and speculation. It, but, but I will say this, if the school board said, okay, city, we'll give this to you, and, and then the foundation, if they, you know, whether they have to continue to pay the 20 to us or, or, or not, but at the end of 20 years, because of their lease, you know, if if they continue paying somebody, 
you know, the school board may want that money. You know, they may still want that money for as long as they pay it. But regardless, the at the end of the 20 years, they're going to they're going to own it. We ain't going to own nothing because that's what their contract says. That's is that not correct? That's why you renegotiate it. So, mm -hmm. so you know, so you you got you've got three entities that if the school board said yes, we'll give it to you, then we'll say okay, we'll we'll take it only if these you know this criteria can be met, and that's what has to be set. So you know, until the school board <coughs> says that they have any interest in all doing it, I mean, it's we're wasting our time. I agree. Ms. Kendricks? I also would like to really caution council to get the details of the deal. It's very nice to hear about what's good for the community, but that's what we heard about on the sewer plant too. And I don't want to kumbaya our, our way into a half of a community center the same way we did into half a sewer plant. So we really need go. to know what we're doing. Bob, just like to remind everybody that we just upheld a vote to move to the community center. You sort of do away with a lot of your bargaining power. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you tell them you're coming? <laughs> well, yes and no. If, if they, there's still a lot of issues going on. If we get the, if the school allows us the building, they're still in negotiation and through there. But that's going to be before the school board. We don't know what the school board's going to do yet, Mr. Well, Mitchell. And don't forget, Councilman, we still have to approve that lease with the foundation. Yeah, we, that yeah, we haven't, yet. haven't seen it yet. Yeah, but I mean, we and can negotiate for years and years and years, but we're and, committed to going and, there. And the devil's in the details, so hang on. Any further discussion? All right. Um, no further discussion and actually that brings us down to that number four and I think the discussion of the community center rooms will already been discussed on that too uh, <laughs> so um, new business uh, wait a minute what? Mine. number five event in December Spring Street oh event in December okay <laughs> All right. Motion to discuss. Event so in December. Yep. So moved. Second. 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 Yeah, second. All right, Mickey. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Brought this up at the last meeting to try to get information straightened out because I had two different copies of two different event things set up in December. One was for Saturday the 2nd, one was for Saturday the 9th. Things in the meantime have gotten more and more confusing and believe me, I am hearing from the merchants. We've already gotten some paperwork from some of them on their feelings on this. Um, I would like to know, I have several questions here that I have got to ask. This event Mr. Mayor is scheduled for the 9th, right? Correct. And what are the hours that you wanted Spring Street closed? Or that's been agreed upon, whatever. Well, the, they're going to be setting up, I believe, at 2 o'clock. The streets actually begins at 4 o'clock. So what time are you closing Spring? 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. Till what was it, 10 o'clock? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. Okay. Except that the street will still be open for people to pick up packages and deliveries. Uh, if you've got a package, if you bought something, there's gift shop wrap, and there'll be gift wrapping up there. And you'll be able to drive up to your shop. So the street's shop. not being closed. It's going to be closed through three traffic, but if you're coming up to pick up a, a gift or a package, it won't be closed. Okay, because I was told on that part that if somebody was buying something that was going to have to be wrapped and picked up, that they would make arrangements with the shop person and the shop person would have to walk it down or up to some place to meet. This is, I'm telling Please. you what merchants are telling me. Just wait a minute, just wait a minute, Jack. No, just um, wait a minute. Just wait. Oh, I so, in regards to that, that's causing confusion. The other confusion was... Let's, you want to address one at a time? I'm going to address you. Okay. Which businesses 
did you, when I first contacted you saying, I don't know what this is about, and you sent me the, your information, which businesses was it that you sent the survey to to see how they felt about this? Every business that was affected along Spring Street. Okay, now, by being affected, what do you mean by that? That the parking was not going to be, that where well, the parking would be, there'd be no parking in front of their business. Okay. And so I think, the did we go ahead from, businesses from Center Street about. up to the Mountain Street? That's where, the, that's where all they went to. Okay, because I've had several merchants tell me, well, excuse me, this is an event going on. It affects me. I don't care where my shop is, whether I have parking lot, and you have lived here as long as I have, well, longer. We both know you can be all the way up at Upper Main, oh, that way, Upper Main, and have an event going on up there, and these people are affected. These merchants are furious that they were left out because they weren't in a two-block area. They are part of the city. They get affected, and this kind of stuff is wrong. They had no knowledge. When they did get knowledge, it's two different sets of information, just like I pointed out at the last meeting. Two days, two different days, two hours. Now I'm hearing it's going to be both the 2nd and the 9th. Um, unlimited different hours and stuff the merchants are furious and I have some merchants over here that would like to address you in regards to the situation why council didn't know why nobody knew anything until the very last minute so if we would now I am I'm letting a person talk What's your point of order? Point of order. Does does council have the right to call up? Uh, yes. At at some point to discuss. Yes. And do they have a time frame or any type of rules or regulations about that? Please? We we have the right to let I'm a person the talk to I'm ask for them. You, I'm asking the. Well, opinion. you're looking at me. Well, I'm looking at him too. You just happen to be on the same side of the table as him. Council in the past has allowed people to talk by a vote of the council. Vote of the council. Okay. Oh, by a vote. Okay. I don't, we haven't done that all Thank the time. You. Okay. Mel Shipley would like to talk, and Karen would like to talk. Those are the only two out of everybody in here watching and submitting and stuff. Those are the only two people who would like to be heard. So can we have a vote? Of so I think there should be a vote. You need to make a motion. You're looking at him. I'm okay. looking at you. You're the one that needs to well, make a motion. Well, I make a motion that we allow these two people to speak as we've done in the past so we can get their feelings since they're the ones who are affected. Do I have a second? I'll give it a second and then I'll have an amendment. Okay. That there's a time frame of two minutes. Does that work for you guys? That has to be I would, on. I should say five. You got to have the amendments got to be serious. voted on. I I second that amendment. What? Two okay, minutes. two minutes. No. All right, we got a motion on the amendment. Discussion on the amendment. Yes, sir. I can't even say my name in two minutes. Yeah. That's, that's this a is a very short. serious situation. Yeah. It needs to be addressed by the people it's affecting. I, I made the motion. I, uh, all right, all in favor of the amendment, you get a roll call. Specify. The two-minute limit is the amendment. Ms. McClung? No. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Mr. Thomas? No. Ms. Snyder? Nope. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Two, three. Motion fails. I make a motion we allow them five minutes to talk. Um, I point of order. Don't we have a motion on the We day? got a motion. You wanna make you wanna amend the motion? Okay, I'm amending the motion to five minutes. I get a second. I second that. Any discussion on that? All right. We will call. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. 
Mr. McClung? Sure, yes. Mr. Mitchell? No. Mr. Thomas? Yes. 4 1. All right. Now, for the main motion, before you do that, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, if the motion is to limit it to just these two people, that could be a violation of freedom of speech. Yeah. You need to make it how many ever people? Okay, so I need to change my motion to let these people speak? Yes. Okay. Let it let, let the public speak. Okay. Because Jack wants to speak too. Sorry, Jack. Didn't mean to ignore you. All right, Liz. <laughs> so I'm changing my motion to say let the public speak on this issue. Got it. And uh, I don't know who seconded that. I think. David? Yeah. You second the original motion? With the caveat of making it two minutes, yes, yeah. but he did I second it. I'm not going to second this again. I'll second it. All right. All those in favor, would do roll call. And what is the motion, please? To allow the public to speak for five minutes. On this issue only? Well, yes. Oh, I'm looking at that. All right. <laughs> roll call. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Abstain. <laughs> Mr. McClung? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Four, zero, one. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Shipley, you'd like want to come up here and speak? You're, you were on your way a minute ago, sir. Entertainer, but this is off. <laughs> 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 there you go. Will it work like that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm Mel Shipley, and uh, I have two shops on Spring Street, two buildings on Spring Street, Upper Spring Street. My wife and I both own the Silly Chili and 85 Spring Street Art Gallery. Two weeks ago, two days ago, the Main Street people came into my gallery and informed me that they're going to close Spring Street. Blew me away. I thought, really? How's this happening? They said, well, not only is it happening, but you're the only one against it. Now, I figured right away somebody's not telling the truth here because four years ago we had a city council put thumbs down on closing that street unanimously. We stormed the city hall. Two of you were there. Now, Jack says he went up the street part way back down again and he found it great. The day I found out about this, the very next day, I was on the street too. And I went from the top to the bottom. And I turned around and I went back up to the other side. I found 26 people who did not want this to happen. Now, they try to tell you, look, we're not going to put something in that's going to interfere with what you're selling, right? We find vendors that will sell things that people here don't sell. What could that be? What could that possibly be? We are in the market of selling the want. We don't have anything other than what people want. And anything you put on that street is going to fall in that criteria. If you want to boost traffic, bring in entertainers. Get yourself a nice little wagon and put some hay bales on it and take people rides. But don't come into competition with us. Anything you sell is competition. We're already dealing with the internet. We're already dealing with the boom going on in the 49 corridor. We don't need more competition. Trust me. You know, when I found out about this, I thought, what mayor in God's green earth would shut down his main district of shopping? Who would do that? We found one. They found one. And then they went about to keeping it quiet. Isn't it amazing that it was signed on September the 1st and the shop owners didn't find out about it until a month, what, 13 days later? I walked the street 
And I ask them, and I hand out pieces of paper, have you heard about this? Have you heard about it? Nobody heard about it. But yet Mr. Moriart said, Moriart said, yeah, we put the word out. It wasn't on the internet. I couldn't find it, and neither could the people I talked to. This is backdoor politics. That's truly what it is. And it should not exist. We should be a part of this. You guys should be a part of this. You guys should want to be a part of this. The only way you're going to make something work in the community is to work together. And when you shut one side out and then try to whitewash it and say that didn't happen, that didn't work. You were right. There could be a firestorm. There could be picketers. There could be blacked out windows. This thing could turn ugly. It shouldn't. But what are you leaving your citizens? What are you leaving your shop owners? We're invested deeply here. And this is our livelihoods. And we do not appreciate not being a part of the decision making when it comes to what we have bought and paid for, what we are working for. We are the people that are paying the taxes that's making this thing work here. I appreciate your time. I hope you guys get engaged. I hope you can come up with a resolution that will take away the power from the dictatorship back to the people. We need a board of people that we can communicate with that can control. We don't need one-sided decisions. Thank you. Could I recognize Mr. Lindblad? I'm just going to put these at this end and you can pass them down. This is <clears throat> a petition signed by a lot of retailers and I have included, because I FOIA'd all of the emails <clears throat> that came in to the mayor when he was telling me that on the decision of three businesses he thought we should carry this ahead. Um, these are the emails that people sent to him saying we are not in favor of it. And I will tell you that a lot of the people on this list have had businesses for a long time. We at Gazebo Books are starting our 42nd year in business. And I can tell you, anytime Spring Street is closed down, business goes down. So here's this. Okay. Got it. Right. <clears throat> this is the timeline. On September 1st, Butch Berry, Mayor Berry, signed the application for this. Okay? On November 7th, he sent an email to Jackie Woven saying that um, she had not talked to the fire department or to the police department about this event. On <coughs> November 8th, the mayor emailed Jackie that he thought they were unhappy retailers and he thought she would canvas. He thought sh she should canvas the retailers. On the 10th, he sent an email to the retailers for their opinion. Finally, two months, more than two months after he signed the permit, finally he contacts the retailers. Okay? On the 10th, Jackie emails the mayor that it's 100% support for this, for this event. Before that, she emailed him and told him it was 80%. Okay. And on the 10th of November, Jackie visits the businesses. I, don't, I talked to other retailers. <clears throat> there was no survey done. We were told that this was happening. Period. We have had no say in this. You know, we, as Mel pointed out, we pay a lot of money to have our businesses. And, by the way, <coughs> Jamie from T-Rex told us at the meeting that they held down at Main Stage <coughs> that the only items that were going to be sold at the market were two-dimensional items. Well, somebody better go to the cattywampus 
Crafts website and find out that they sell all kinds of things, including items that our retailers sell. Plus, in one email, or one thing that I think it was the permit, they're going to have music on the street too. You know, the retailers have no choice here. We can't say, no, we don't want a booth in front of our businesses. The only thing that the retailers can say is, oh yes, I'll pay $120 for a booth so I can pull stuff out of my shop. Our shops are small here. We don't need to be pulling our stuff out on the street. And <clears throat> if money's tight already, why would you want to spread it out further? Plus, and it's been advertised all over the place, the, the Caddy Wampus craft co-op uh, co is having a huge sale in Fayetteville on December 2nd. And I have heard it all over the radio. So those people are going to come over here when they've already shopped over there. And on, on the uh, permit, Jackie said they were expecting 100 to 500 people. It was Jamie from T-Rex that said, well, don't you want a thousand customers? Well, we don't know we're going to get a thousand customers. You know, there have been questions about electricity. There have been questions about where are these people going to use restrooms. <clears throat> but, but to me, the bottom line is it affects the retailers big time. We weren't told for two months. And then we were told it's too late. We don't really, we don't want your opinion. This is going to happen, and you're just going to deal with it. And I'm telling you, there are retailers that didn't sign this that are mad also. And this is about half of the retailers on Spring Street, if not more, <coughs> because we've got some empty spaces. And I would ask that the council take back control of closing Spring Street and closing streets in town because to have it decided by one person is really a crime. And I went in and talked to Butch for 35 minutes and you know he like pretty much blew it off. So you know if you want your retailers in this town to continue to be happy you better start including them on things that are going to affect their bottom line and this will big time. And when the traffic goes, when they close off the parking at 2 o'clock, most of the business, as you know, most of the business comes in in the afternoon. So from 2 o'clock on, no one will be able to park on Spring Street unless they're already there. Thank you. Uh, I'm I appreciate uh, hearing from Rao and I respect his business. We have a clear difference of, uh, difference of opinion. Uh, we did visit Mel's shop. Jackie uh, came in and, and met with Mel. And he uh, uh, clearly stated that he was not in support of that, but he wasn't, wouldn't, wouldn't block that, or that's my, my perception. But I understand that Mel has a difference of opinion. There's a few things that I want to make sure that, that you all understand and, and that I can share with you. Main Street is a volunteer board. It's not just one person. Uh, it's a group of nine individuals who, who dedicate their time year-round to participate and to move the community forward. I just asked for you guys to think back maybe 10 or 15 years ago and ask where the Christmas shopping season was back then. And you got a question, does that just organically happen? Or is there an organization that's maybe furthering the economic uh, growth and improvement for the, for the city? Because when I moved here 22 years ago, there was no Christmas shopping season. And somebody's doing the work to further that, to have a shopping season, season vibrant. One of, those, one of those events is Living Windows. And Living Windows has been very successful, and I think you guys recently have enjoyed that. Living Windows pairing together with the Spring Street Market is a shopping event intended to drive more traffic. Jamie Brandt, who happens to be the, a retailer directly in the middle of Spring Street, was a part of the development of this concept and, and went out and reached out to find a market that was non-competitive. We learned in, at the National Main Street, this is where Main Streets are going, okay? Doing the same thing over and over and over again does not yield growth. It yields attrition. And that's part of what's hurting Eureka Springs. Introducing new is a positive thing. This is a shopping event 
intended to serve as a signature event that is held at the latter end of the shopping season that sends the message to all of our advertising, Eureka Springs is open for Christmas. And we all get to see the benefit of that. There's a few things I wanted to clarify, and I hope I get a little bit extended time as there was two folks to, to talk, but uh, we did have a community meeting. We followed the process. We met with the department heads. I met with the police chief, okay? I called the fire department. So when that email is out, I personally did that. I'm the board chair, and I think our organization should get credit for that. So I met with Thomas, and he verified that. We held, uh, they had a department head meeting. It's unfair, by the way, uh, to put Butch under the fire on this. We put the pressure on Butch, okay? So he's catching a lot of heat, but he was trying to represent all party, and I want the record to show that. Uh, there was a department head meeting. We engaged Caddy Wampus. We're under contract. There will be music on the street, mom and pop. There will also be Santa on the street because that's what events like this do. The market is not on 12.2 and 12.9. It is only on 12.9. Every bit of information that was ever out there just said 12.9. From the work... Yes, it did. I've got a copy that says two. Okay. I, I don't know about that, but I'll be happy I'm to look joking. at it. I'm joking. Well, Caddy well, Wampus, well, let's, let's Caddy Wampus will have a market. They are a professional organization, so they may have a market in Fayetteville on 12.2, but they'll also have a market here on 12.9. Uh, it is an effort to restart competitiveness. I get it. Everybody doesn't agree. You're not going to get 100% agreement. It's just not possible, okay? But I believe that this can work. Ask yourself, 4 p.m. on a December evening, 4 p.m., now say 7, 8, 9. Is there a lot of shopping going on during that period? No, but there could be because we're at the primary peak of where people are buying Christmas shopping uh, gifts. And Eureka Springs now is giving them another reason to come to Eureka Springs during that time frame. You asked um, when, the, uh, when the roads will close, okay? And I think that there should be clarity there. It is under the direction of Thomas Acord. We, he has the ability to shut it as early as 2 p.m. and as late as 3 p.m. based on his discretion. So it may be open later. There will be drive-through traffic that will go through, and we will have a, a space. Most importantly, I really ask that you guys honor the process. A permit was filed. The department heads reviewed and vetted the, uh, they issued a permit. There was a concern that was raised legitimately by people like Mel. The mayor said, let us review this process. Main Street went out onto the street and walked the streets and got overwhelming support for it. The mayor then called us back in. We went through the procedure, and then the mayor asked that there would be a full review after this event. So, thank you. I'm available for questions. Yes, sir. Okay. Nope, I'm sorry. Oh. oh, we have more public than yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Last year, December the 6th, Telluride has its Noel night. What makes it a success? No booths, no tents in front of the shops. There is no street closures. It's a town very similar to Eureka in size. You rate Colorado the same. They have a Noel night. The idea is, once again, is to get people into the shops. Putting anything out in front of the shops to distract the people will not work. It will, de it will take business away from the shops. What, the, what will help is keeping them open at night. One of the biggest complaints, of course, is that the shop owners close at 6 and people can't shop. Weekends. The town is packed on weekends. What is the biggest problem on the weekends in Eureka? Ask Mr. DeVito. No parking. Where's the park? Where are these people going to park that are going to come in here once you close the streets? You're going to take parking spots away. This is a bad business plan. Brick and mortar is hurting everywhere. Even where the millionaires sold out to the billionaires in Telluride. Speak to the shop owners there. They are hurting. But if you want to have elbow-to-elbow -elbow people in the shops, what you need is, as I pointed out before, they came up with a great business plan. They give away free finger food, soft drinks, 
and they have a little gambling aspect to it. They put little balls out there with slips of paper in it, and when you go up to the cash register with the items you pick out in the stores, you reach in, you pick out a slip of paper, and it tells you what your discounts are. And of course, one of the big advertising promotions is it's a night of big discounts to help the shop owner. Weekends are full everywhere. That's why they have it in both in most mountain towns midweek to bring the people into town when they normally wouldn't be there. And I don't have any dog in this fight, you know what I'm saying? It, it, but I'm just telling you what I've observed. You go down to Fort Lauderdale, the main business street there, which is not a shopping mall, it's Las Olas Boulevard. Can you believe <coughs> even there, surrounded by million dollar homes, and the richest people on the face of the earth, the shop owners are hurting there too. When they have their, you know, art shows down there, which have world class art in there, they have juried events there where they only invite the top 200 people to put their booths, it doesn't help the shop owners one bit. And that's why now there's, they're having a big to do about how to revitalize what used to be a glitzy shopping area in the middle of Las Olas. It's gone. Brick and mortar needs your help. They don't need competition from people coming from the outside to take business away from these poor shop owners. Well, as they said, the idea of paying $120 to put up a booth in front of your shop is insane. So I have to say. I'm going to address a couple of points that have been brought up as well. Um, one of my favorite sayings about myself is, I'm fat, I'm not stupid. And when you peel away the veneer of this whole event, you can see what's going on. The people who have planned this either have in the past or are currently been on the chamber or the CAPC board. Again, retail has never gotten a voice on either one of those. Sure, we want a thousand people to come in because if we trap them here at night, they can stay at the basin. Oh, who's the manager? Well, the chairperson of Main Street. He's also on other boards. So it's all self-interest. This has nothing to do with retail. This is a sideline. We're going to do this. You want to make this a signature thing for Eureka? You want to make this a signature event for Eureka? Then come up with your own damn signature. Quit using everybody else's. We're going to copy another event from another town because another organization told them that's what's hot? You know, I mean, come on, guys. This is not fair to local retail. I have a shop on Main Street. My address is actually on the street that this organization is named after. In three years, not a soul from this organization has stepped foot into my shop on, in an official manner. None of the shops on North Main through this fiasco have been surveyed asked to participate. The invitation wasn't even extended. Hey, you know, we know you're down here on the wrong side of the tracks where nobody cares because there's nothing down here. But if you want to spend 120 bucks, we'll reserve a space for you. None of us were even asked to participate. So then you want to tell me this is about community and building community when you're only representing a small, narrow portion of community? That's wrong. That's not how you do business. That's not how you generate support. And then when you have your community meeting about this, we're going to do it on a Thursday at 9 a.m. to discuss business building so everybody can close their businesses to come to a business meeting. Now, can we, what kind of stupidity is that? Had I gone to that business meeting that was a half a block away from my shop, I would have lost $150. Because at 8.45 in the morning, on a lot of given mornings, I've got people lined up outside my shop to get haircuts before they go to work. And I'm supposed to lose that money and upset those clients so I can go to a business meeting during business hours from an organization that's about generating business. 
So I just don't understand how that kind of mindset can even be taken seriously when it comes to developing an event like this and then get support behind closed doors without letting the people who are footing the bill, paying the taxes, paying for the business license, paying for the inspections, we're footing the bill. A 5013C, they ain't paying the taxes. The retailers are. Thank you. Anybody else? Jen. Twenty years. <laughs> We've been here twenty years. All I wanted to say is the reason there's not a lot more merchants here tonight is because they already feel defeated because they were like last ones invited to the party, and the party's going to go on without them, and that's just not right. It's not fair. And that's why we don't have more merchants here tonight. But as you see on the petition, uh, there, there's a whole bunch of us. The other thing is, I ask, please take back the power and give it back to the people. Council, please. That's what we really would like, is to be represented fairly. I think that uh, what this is, is a foot in the door. I, I don't look for this to go away. That uh, didn't go away. And, you know, we thought it went away four years ago, we thought, in the merchants one. Um, but, you know, I think that this gentleman and this network, whatever it is, th th this is just a foot in the door. And we've got to be prepared to have representation of the people. So please, that's what I ask counsel is please give us that. Thank you for your time. Anyone else? David? You know, this this whole thing, and I was here four years ago when Morris Tate was having discussion about some kind of festival, and I remember and I remember the merchants being volatile then, very upset. Totally understand it. Business is rough. You look at the statistics this year alone with internet sales escalating and retail sales not. Malls closed. I mean, it's 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 a bad business. It's it's rough. I'm on the CAPC, and we only collect taxes from restaurants and lodging. And you can see a lot of day trippers, and, and, and you you look at all the stuff, and so you see people in town looking around, trying to reinvent or come up with new ideas new things, uh, an attempt to break the mold of old, to, to seek out ways to, to present the city in the best light possible, and an attempt to bring in guests. We're a tourist town, started as one, is one now, and will always be one. We're not going to have anything else but tourists. We're certainly not going to have big industry here. So when you're looking at tourists and, and people to come in, you really want to try and, and look around at the best ideas. Bob Janowski brought up the Noel. That's an excellent idea. It's not going to help us this year by any means, but it should be brought up in that Christmas group that will be working on next year. It's a great idea. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with it. There's really not much that we've heard tonight that's going to help this year because guess what? It's kind of already in place. And so it, it's, it's probably going to go ahead. The mayor got the best I can tell. He got feedback from his department heads. He, he received other feedback from Main Street. He, he evaluated the situation. And he did what he has the authority to do because back four years ago when the discussion came up with Morris Pate, the attorney there said that the mayor has the authority, final authority, to close the street. The mayor also has that basis because he, has, he assesses and gets feedback from department heads, the police chief, the fire chief. So everything was followed. Now, may, the outcome may not be great. Obviously, this petition shows that. But guess what? We're in the, we're in the middle 
of a situation here now where I just don't think it's possible to to stop what's going on. So this year is probably going to be um, an opportunity to test the um, approach that has been laid out. Vicki? Um, one of the things that it may be getting overlooked is who we are. What is our business? Our only business is tourism. That means people come here to eat, to sleep, to shop. We're not like any other town in the country. Thank goodness we are our own unique little self. We don't need to do anything that anybody else is doing. We do our own thing. We are known for our own thing. We are known for being our own little Victorian quirky village that has no neon and so on and so forth. People who have been here before know parking's a problem. They've learned to take trolleys. If you want an event to happen, what you have to look at, number one, are the merchants. They are your number one concern. Every person sitting here at this council table, your number one concern is the city, which is who? The merchants. Without the merchants, and that includes artists and woodworkers and shopkeepers, anybody who is dealing and the, the food and the lodging, anybody who is dealing with tourism, that's your number one concern. That is number one. All you need to remember, which was obviously painfully overlooked this time, was you talk to the merchants. You talk to them from day one. You talk to them before you talk to the department heads. You talk to the people who keep this town functioning. And Jack, not against you, but your hotel has nothing to do with being hurt by having some vendor sitting in front of it. Whereas Mel's shop would. My shop across the street would. One of the other problems that came up, and I touched on it before when I said merchants all over, except for that two block area were ignored, was Main Street. And Cameron brought that up very nicely. And to expand, I got calls from merchants on Main Street saying, why were we not notified? Why were we not included? This whole town is based on tourism, which means it's based on merchants. And like I said, whatever kind that is, food, lodging, art, t-shirts, it doesn't matter. If you deal with tourism, that's what keeps this town functioning. When you shut them out at any point, you're screwing this town. That's exactly what it comes down to, and it's got to stop. And I thoroughly agree because Morris Pate, as much as I love him, and I owe him my son's life, that's how dear to me he is. Without understanding the tourism aspect was going to shut down Spring Street for all of Memorial Weekend because he didn't get it. We ended up having a town hall meeting, which was awesome. He got it. We can't have our streets being shut down unless it's, I'm going to say, 75% approval, whatever. Point being, this should be a situation that council decides based on input from the community and all levels of the community. We have got to think of them first or our town is dead. That's what's going to happen. So keep that in mind, everybody at this table. Point of information. Hmm? Point of oh. information. What? Go ahead. The meeting that took place, 325.13, I was asked to go back and review, which I did today. It, it may be someone's memory that the mayor, that the city attorney said the mayor may close the street. That is, that is not reflected on the tape. 
that is not reflected in the minutes. There was a discussion wherein right to close the street was covered and one of the last, I, I think I handed a copy of the minutes to a couple of those folks who have it behind you, David. And interestingly, at the end, toward the end of that very extensive discussion, you, you made it a point that it wasn't clear and until it was made clear, I mean, you're, you can look at that and I can tell you I've made, I have notes on where that is if you want to actually review the meeting <coughs> itself and see what was said and what was is, is memory. The end result, those folks moved their plan to another location that was more suitable. So anyway, that's the point of information. Thank you. David? I don't see my name anywhere here in the minutes or anything that you said in these minutes. Well, the, the, all that you just said, I don't find in here. Your your closing comment. All right, was <coughs> made, and I can Come on. tell you where it is. Point. Go on. Okay. Yes. I don't think Christian. what happened several years ago is relevant at this point. Well, to say that, but, but, but Christie's got the floor. Go ahead. Well, I just Dan. don't understand how how discussing what happened at that meeting is relevant right now. Okay. Thanks. Further yeah. discussion? Just, okay. just the fact that I think it's a general understanding, and maybe Tim can find it for us, that the mayor has is the sole authority on closing streets for any event. We need to have that looked into because I can remember it both ways. That is for emergency situations, and that it could also be for this. So if we could find that, that would help clarify that part. Mr. McClellan? Well, I, you know, and, and, and that'd be great because I, I was kind of, I had the understanding that the mayor had that authority too, but uh, uh, so, you know, I, I would like to ask Mr. Weaver if, if that's, if that's, if that's the case. Um, if, if can we do something wrong? Did the mayor do something wrong? Is, you know, or, I am not aware of anything that the mayor has done improperly. Okay. Uh, as far as closing the streets temporarily, that is typically an executive power. <laughs> Further discussion? Yeah. Okay. Because I call Tim and ask him that question and, and you were a little not so sure when in our conversation. Where is that found that that's an executive power? It would go back to several roots in the common law. It would also I think go back to the uh, fact that the street department is part of the executive branch but the common law uh, goes to the police powers. The police powers are all executive powers. They're not legislative powers. If you want to close the street permanently, the mayor probably can't do that without your approval if you want to leave it open. Or if you want to open a street and the mayor doesn't want it open because that goes back to your ability to control the real estate of the city. But for a temporary shutdown, if there's a fire, Mayors have always had the power to shut down a street for that. If there's a flood, if there's any other kind of police emergency, if there's any kind of thing, so that would be the beginning of the executive power to do that. You don't call out the legislature to vote when a sewer overflows. Now, this is not a sewer overflowing, but it's also a very temporary shutdown of a street. And that goes to the parade powers, which also rest in the mayor's office as executive branch. You don't call out typically the legislature to vote when someone is going to ask for a parade permit. Each time they ask for a parade permit, they go down to City Hall, they fill out the proper paperwork, it runs through the committees or through the ch uh, heads of the department, it <laughs> runs through the executive branch. It, as I said, if, you, if you're going to close it down for days on end, then you probably need to be consulted. But if it's very short, and if you want it in black and white, I can't produce it to you in black and white. But we could, I assume, 
for the Attorney General to opine on that in about six months. <laughs> Mickey? Um, what I would like to suggest is that this street closing thing, that we come up with our own city ordinance, whatever, basically saving anything over one hour, because we don't have a single parade that lasts more than an hour. Um, our antique car parade is closed, it's about 45 minutes. But if we do our own ordinance or make our own, however, wherever we would have to put it, anything over an hour has to be okayed through council. Anything under than that is the mayor, you know, for a parade. It's not a big deal. But for an event, or if you want to do it the other way and say any event that's going to last more than four hours or more than three hours with the street being closed, you know, it could be worked out that way, but something has to be done to protect the merchants and therefore this town. With the street closing at 2 o'clock, this whole thing starting at 2, from past experience, they're going to have to close down the streets at, at noon. That's another two hours of no parking and no business. This can be really, really horrific. Mr. Mitchell? I, I still don't see an, a, an outcome that the merchants are going to be happy with for the December 9th. I still see it's it, a mess. It's going on. And I still, I still see it going on. And all the other discussion about moving into the executive powers of the mayor and everything uh, are, are troublesome to me. But I, I understand it. I listened to the attorney just then. And that, that discussion in that way it, it was still expressed at that meeting. Minutes may not have proved it. We've discussed issues with minutes in the past. I'm not going there. But look at the meeting. But I still, I still think that this has been set up and it's been arranged and it's, and it's t too late to move it. Further discussion. Can you been Mr. McClellan. I, uh, you know, I. I I don't. I don't want to be trying to do something to block what the mayor's done, and and um, and and can't. But I, but I think I think the mayor understands uh, the gravity of the situation, and so I think it may be something that that he may have to establish his own policy on these kind of things, and set a criteria that in his office that would have to be met. Uh, in the future that would be you know well before I'll sign anything off on anything you know I, I, I want to see a show of hands you know uh, a list of those that are in favor and I mean I mean we're, I, we're I, think, I think this is I think this has been a hard lesson learned on the learning curve for him as well uh, we've been discussing that about on the uh, application you know it's it's uh, so um, I mean it's I'm sorry. Uh, it's it's his call. It's not ours. It's uh, just, I hate it, but I mean, you know. But that's no, just. I just could I ask Mr. Moyer one question? Okay. Would it be possible to to cut hours of this this thing? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Would it be possible to cut short the hours on this? I don't. I don't think so. And the reason for that, remember, this is the signature event of the Christmas season. Mm -hmm. There's been thousands of dollars in advertising that has been unified because all of the groups are working together. It's a little troublesome to hear the defamation of the chamber and mm -hmm. CAPC. These are the groups that are delivering results for this community. And this is a great example of it. Parks, the city, the mayor, the CAPC, the chamber, and Main Street, all working together to deliver the Christmas season and build the Christmas season. I'm sure that that's what we've been asking for all along. Let's all work together for a common goal. I understand where you're coming from, Mickey, and I understand where the retailers are coming from, but please know, this isn't all the retailers, okay? There is a difference of opinion. The mayor has asked that Main Street survey, or I, maybe you want to independently survey, after the event to see what the outcome is, to see if it's something that you want to do. But please don't think it's all the retailers. That's not our uh, experience. All right. That In answer get, to your we're question. Getting, we're getting off the subject yes, there. Any further discussion? 
All right. Get a motion to um, the being none. Let's go on to our new business. Uh, get a motion to discuss uh, discussion issues with the transit booking group tours. Motion to discuss. Second. Uh, Mr. Mitchell. All right. Um, David. Sir. Do you want to lead off? I think you had a yeah, and Ms. It was uh, yes. This was the discussion about the current ordinance that prohibit prohibits or 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 dictates how transit can handle bookings that that could be directed directly to them, so that they keep them and not have to uh, not have to split with the current arrangement. So. What I was hoping is that we, that the council would give some consideration for our current transit department to be able to to book their 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 own tours separate and, and change that ordinance a little bit. That was, and I was hoping that co uh, council would give that some consideration for our transit department. Well, would that booking also occur through the CAPC? Is Not necessarily. No. We have, uh, I talked with Marty, my office manager who answers most of the phones. We've had 20 to 25 groups call us directly. Okay. And if they're a few weeks out, we refer them to the franchise. If they want to come tomorrow, we say, yeah, this is how much, come on. And uh, it, it, they're restricted, but they do walk up. It's for the one o'clock or three o'clock tour, which are the individual tours. They can't schedule an off time. Only only a franchise can schedule an off time with a group. Well, do you want the power to work like with the CAPC as well? Own. I don't know about the CAPC, but CAPC is not going. They don't. They're not in a retail location. No, they're not. Okay. They're not. I, I, they're not. I, I, they they not do city advertising. Okay. okay. I don't know how it work with through them. But I see groups coming to town who don't get to see our loop because they have to go through a franchise. And they don't want to. They just want to come to town and see the loop. Now, I, I think I sent each of you an email with a proposed um, ordinance, based on the line taken out that says I have to refer to Joe. And um, <clears throat> like I said in the email, I won't promote groups because I think that draw, that crosses a line with my federal funding if I were to start promoting for groups. I want to provide step-on service because I don't want to provide step-on service. That's where they get on the bus and go all around everywhere except the loop that they can't go on. Mr. Weaver? Before you get too interested, this is a franchise. A franchise is a contract you just renewed. Before you make changes to that, you need to consult with your franchisee, see what he is willing to concede. Or you need to make these changes so that they become effective on the next renewal. You're probably right on that, yeah. <coughs> yes, you said uh, a couple weeks ago that it really wasn't a matter of money. Uh, so why couldn't it be written so that when you book the group, you'd give 35% of the money to the franchise guy. Well, he's, he's not expending any any resources toward that group. The arrangement we have now mm -hmm. is when he brings a group to town, he's taking his time, his promotion money to bring that group to town, he gets the larger split. Mm -hmm. At the individual tour times, he provides the guide, either himself or he hires Joe, hire, you should hire the guide for that. He's he's expending resources right. on that also. So if I could book my own groups, I would use my own guides. Yeah. So a group calls you and they want to do something, mm -hmm. and you say, "Here's the guy to call to do that," yep. and they say, "Oh well, forget it. We don't want to call him." Why 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 does that happen like that? I don't know. And we've also had I know two groups that we referred to Joe, and a month later they call us back and say he never called us. Yeah, that's a different problem. Yeah, that's a different problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, like I said, I know talking to Karen Pryor, there are groups that come to town that don't get to Sarah Luke because their vehicle's too big. 
uh, you know, and like I said, it's not about money. It's going to cost me money to do this mm -hmm. if the council allows it. So we need to. That's basically my concern. I want I want more groups to be able to see what's most unique about this town, and that's the historic loop. Which, when they come to town and the vehicle's too big by ordinance, they can't yeah. see it. Right. David. Well, based on the attorney, then, since we entered a contract now. Smitty showed us an ordinance, but you say we have a contract that actually precludes that we really couldn't change the ordinance to meet what Smitty asked for because the contract is in effect, and so we'd have to wait two years for the next contract. It did, that's what I heard. Or get agreement from oh. your. I, I thought he would be here tonight, but I guess I guess not. Okay. So there's really no action for us at this time, other than maybe. Smith talks to Joe to see if, and then comes back to us, and that's about it. I would suggest that would be an appropriate okay, so avenue, and then if if he says no and you still want to make a change, your transit director can come back and tell you, I'd like to make a change, and you can consider whether it's worth potentially getting sued or whether you want to make the change so that it becomes active in two years. Two years. Okay. So. We don't have to do anything then, huh? <laughs> Not at this point. Any further, Mr. McCarthy? Well, that's the only thing that I, I'd like to have an idea of what kind of dollars and cents of the, potentially it is, you know, something. You know, if it's like you talked about before, it's, it's not about the money. And, and, and I understand that, that you know, it's the, it's the service, and, and maybe it's, it's, it's we've got to pump Joe a little bit to, to be a little more. The group the Responsive individual tours that we, we book individuals who want to ride the tram this year grossed a little over $140,000. Joe Gunnels gets 35% of that. When Joe brings a group to town, we get 60% of the published group rate, which is $14 a person. So it's $9 we get. Last I looked, Joe actually paid to us just over seven thousand dollars. Where we paid Joe, I uh, don't know, my, I can do my math real quick, but <laughs> more than that. Now his expenses are his guides and whatever promotion that he does. My expenses are fuel, drivers, maintenance, and we purchased a tram, which we're still paying for. So it has expense. And the trams are good for us because that provides the match obligation we need for the federal funding that we get. And it's tram tours that helps transit not come to the city for money when I'm in short. Well, it might be good in, in this two year period that you and Joe get together and say, hey, look, mm -hmm. you know, we need to work out a more equitable deal. Right. Or right. I'm going to search something else, too. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and like he said, he. He may buy his own buses and do his own thing if you get in, you know, in in the business separately from him, or or with him, or you know, partially. I mean, I really not, I don't understand how it's going to work. Right. But uh, uh, that that would but it would make a franchise be an, a, a a a business that's that's self-contained and and not a not doing business with the city or with the transit as a partnership, mm -hmm. which is what you have now. Right, basically, yes. And and so that's you know that's something to be considered. I you know. Right. Yeah, the, these are city. The, the the ordinance basically says a private organization can use city property. That's basically what the ordinance is, and we make an agreement with them too. Yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I mean, you and Joe get along well enough that you guys can sit out and maybe hammer something out that that might uh, might even be more equitable to both parties. And, right. And uh, in my concern are groups. I want to see more groups come to town. Sure. And be able to see our loop. And I think the large vehicle ordinance should stay in place because you haven't noticed these buses are getting bigger. Yeah, no, it's, you're right. Bigger. It needs to stay in place. And we need to keep that. Absolutely. Okay. Any further questions, comments? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Could we take a break?
No. Oh, that's okay. We moved to moved to make five minutes. Are you still on this topic? No, no, it was oh. something else. Then second. I would like to make a motion to take a five minute break. I'll second it. I like to amend that motion. Okay. That we also look at this agenda and see if some of the stuff could be postponed. I'm going to postpone uh -huh. mine. So is it? I mean, could we also do that? I mean, you know, let's let's be honest though. Let, let's do one one or the other. When we get back, we can do that. Okay. Okay. All those in favor of taking a five minute recess, say five minutes, saying aye. 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 Any opposed? They said they say five hours. It said five. Oh. I can get my sleeping bag. Was just taken. What was your vote? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. I think. No, I didn't vote against. No, you haven't. Everybody got the microphone back on. <coughs> All right. Meeting called back to order. Uh, all right, Mickey, I think you wanted to have something. Oh, well, in view of the lateness of the hour, number four discussion, the food truck, I'd like to put it off until the very next meeting, please. Could we also consider number two, possibly, and move that to the next That's meeting? It's already postponed, sorry. Oh, it was? Oh, okay. It's already what? Number two, it was? Postponed. Uh, well, actually, I'm sorry, I meant to tell you before the meeting. <laughs> Oh, oh. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Weaver postponed it. I didn't relay it. Oh, okay. Well, we'll do number two. Yeah, I didn't have that authority. But you know that. Yeah. All uh, right. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess they usurped authority here. What other? It's just two and four. Anybody? Anything else? No, uh, do we? Well, I it's guess three. three essential, okay. right? Everything. Yeah, everything. Right three is not yeah. essential right now either. Could really. we move it? Yeah. And do we need? Uh, and what about seven? Is that necessary right now? Yes. It'll take two minutes for that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll suffer through that. Resolution. Then the other two are the resolutions. So, uh, all right. I've got a motion to defer items two, three, and four to the next meeting. Okay. Uh, so moved. Aye. All right. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, Terry seconded. <laughs> I think you voted. Chris, Steve, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, brings us to a uh, motion to discuss resolution for parking lot lease. So oh. moved. Second. All right. Mr. Mayor. This is our standard lease that we do every year. <laughs> Mr. McClellan. I'd like to uh, make a motion that we we uh, uh, sign this ordinance. Resolution. No, no it's the resolution. Uh, sign this resolution the number and read it for passage. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Clerk's looking for a roll call. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Ms. McClung. Yep. Ms. Snyder. Yep. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Ms. Kendrick. Yes. Sure. Resolution number will be seven one nine. A resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas to negotiate and execute a parking lot lease agreement with the Carroll County Western District Courthouse parking lot by and between the county of Carroll County, Arkansas as less and the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas as less seat. Be it resolved by the city council of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas. The mayor of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas is hereby authorized to negotiate and execute a lease agreement the Carroll County Western District Courthouse parking lot by and between the County of Carroll County, Arkansas is less work and the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas is lessee, whereby said city agrees to lease the following described property. The existing parking lots immediately surrounding and adjacent to the Carroll County Western District Courthouse located at 44 South Main, Eureka Springs, Arkansas 
Such parking lots presently occupying the property directly north, east, south, and south of said courthouse and bounded by distinct barriers such as the auditorium, first street, and curbs respectively for a term of one year commencing on January 1, 2018 and ending on midnight December 31, 2018. All right. We go. Get a motion for um, item six, uh, resolution for city hall office space lease. Motion to discuss. Second. Second. Okay. okay. Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to sign this uh, resolution. The number and read it for passage. Second. Mickey seconded. Yep. Here they can okay. all. Yep. Ms. Kendrick. Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Ms. McClellan? Yep. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. I zero. The resolution number will be 720. A resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas to negotiate and execute a lease agreement buying between the county judge of Carroll County, Arkansas as lessor and the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas as lessee. Be resolved by the city council of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas the mayor of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas is hereby authorized to negotiate and execute a lease agreement by and between the Carroll County Judge of Carroll County, the County Judge of Carroll County, Arkansas, as lessor and the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas as lessee, whereby said city agrees to lease 2,062 square feet of floor space for office purposes on the lowest level of the Western District Carroll County Courthouse, located at 44 South Main Street in the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, for an annual term of up to three years, commencing on January 1, 2018, and subject to renewal annually, no later than January 15th of that year, and thereafter as the parties may agree. For an initial. Annual initial. term, not initial. Is that annual term? <coughs> oh, thank you. And for an initial term. Okay. Uh, all right. That brings us to the final. Uh, we get a motion to discuss the uh, <coughs> financial review. Second. Um, after our workshop, and I think again, uh, congratulations need to go out to all the department heads and and uh, for paying a lot of good attention to their budgets. Uh, our expenses um, were actually under our revenue. Uh, we had 74% uh, or 74.8% uh, expenses uh, and our revenues was 77.7% uh, which shows us approximately $493,000 in the black which is uh, the good news. Uh, our sewer is still uh, showing red, uh, and mainly because of the electrical, well, I say electrical, the utility cost uh, is approximately 11% more than, than what we had uh, anticipated. Um, and that's, uh, once we were taking that out, then the sewer bill would be in, in pretty good shape. Um, and other than that, uh, our fiscal year we're in should be 83% of, of uh, our budgets complete. So our revenue is still not up there. Uh, we're about 5% down, uh, and but our expenses are also way down too. They're almost 10%, 9% down. So we're, we're doing a good job, and that's not only the department heads but the council too. So. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Any questions? Uh, that brings us to uh, agenda setting. Ms. McClellan. Uh, I would like to put on the agenda for the next meeting if, uh, if we have time. Uh, um, the poss uh, a possibility of discontinuing the, the, uh, the video, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, showing the video on YouTube as well as the uh, as the city channel broadcasting live, yeah, right. broadcasting over the right. um, Okay, because it's just it's the cost of transcribing for the for the uh, closed captioning is just it's 
Get an expensive. Uh, do I get a second? Clarification, do you mean um, broadcasting live or off broadcasting? No, we're already we're broadcasting. Not broadcasting live. Live. All broadcasting. Yeah, we're not even doing cool. it live okay. now. So. So, second. Okay. Uh, any other? Mickey? Um, yeah, I'd like to add a discussion and have maybe the city attorney look into I'd like to have a discussion in regards to what we talked about on closing of street events so we can come up with a guideline that everybody including the merchants could be happy with closing of street events yeah okay thank you so we can have a guideline Mickey that's uh, uh, that's something that we're working with in our office right now already for the events and putting on our uh, as part of the event application again I'm not sure uh, I think what you may be wanting is the uh, clarification from the city attorney whether or not that's an executive or legislative no, act no what I want is for all the merchants to be notified in a timely manner like they asked well, well, that's what we're we had to write up a, a guideline or not I don't think that's council I think that's something I, I need to do Okay, which is what I was saying it's what I'm in the process of doing okay you keep us updated I appreciate it I will do that thank you anything else um uh, there's comments uh well that's part of it so uh, council comments oh city council I'm sorry <laughs> I wanted to skip over that I'm sorry I don't, I don't know why you. I don't know why <laughs> okay either. David uh no the only thing I have to say is I hope and favorably pray that December 9th is one of the best damn shopping nights in the history of this town. <laughs> yeah. Me too. No comment. Well, well I'd just like to say I'm, I am really disappointed that a city council person could speak up one night and say I'm not on top of things, I'm confused, I voted erroneously, I'd like to fix it and you guys would vote to deny him that right. Uh, it puts the process, it puts the end, makes the end much more important than the process. And I happen to believe process is very, very important. And uh, I just was very disappointed. Mickey? I'm sorry. <laughs> Too late now. <laughs> um, well, I was going to say Happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas getting it in now that's it Mr. McCoy no comment <laughs> all right uh the mischief <laughs> we have uh, a lot of uh, activities coming up uh in December we've got the uh December 1st the annual Christmas parade of lights at 6 p.m. starting from the library and going down Spring Street uh, on the second we'll have Santa in the park from 1 to 3 in the Basin Park also on the second we'll have the 35th annual tour of homes wow 35 years uh, from 3 to 8 uh, and you can check out their website at Eureka Springs Preservation Society dot org and, and get a list of homes that are going to be on tour uh, also the second that evening at 7 p.m. we'll have John Two Hawks doing his Christmas special and then on the 7th of December will be the 51st annual Silver Tea uh, from 1.30 to 3.30 in the Crescent, Crescent Hotel Crystal Dining Room. Uh, also on the 9th will be Santa in the Basin Park from 1 to 3. And then the same night we'll have the Downtown Night Market uh, in Living Windows from 4 to 9. And also on that same night, we'll have the Night of a Thousand Santas from 5 to 11 from Basin Park and various locations around town. And starting at 7.30 that same night, we'll have the Ozark Corral Holiday Concert at the Auditorium. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I have one question. Don't we have a workshop on December 5th? Isn't that correct? At yes. What time we do it? have a workshop on December 5th. At 3? 3 p.m. Will that be right here? Okay. Yep. And I'll be on the ADA uh, review. Oh, yeah. That's right. So yeah. I think everybody should have a copy or you'll be. You will have. You will have. So be your 
Why'd you bring it up? I 3 p.m. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor?